All right. In the previous video segment, we created the alignment and set the the horizontal vertical alignment to the active profile. Um, I'm still not sure if I'm going to combine all these videos into one long one or keep them in separate segments. Um, but yeah, either way, I'll do some editing if need be. All right. So to add the bridge in, after you have the horizontal and vertical alignment all drawn in and set it to the active profile, just come over to the home tab click this add bridge icon under the bridge setup and now first you want to enter in any information you want to add in under this add bridge box so I've I was working through this a little bit before creating this video so I already have it set to the description of the Salem bridge and I just have the unit and the feature set to bridge and the feature is set to bridge so that's all set how I want it. But if it's not, then you can type in something different. So first you just select the bridge alignment. And I'm okay with the prefix name, so I'll just left click again. And now the bridge is in. You can't see it yet, but it's there. All right, so I'm just gonna close out of the profile view because I don't need that anymore. I'll just click Fit View to adjust this isometric. Now, um, something else I guess I'll cover real quick is changing how the view looks. Um, it's not super important, but it's that's a nice quality of life. So right now this is all super bright. It's the default transparent. Um, I'm just gonna set it to let's see, transparent modeling. It kind of grays it a little bit, so it's a little easier on the eyes. Back up to element selection. All right, so now I added the bridge in there. The next thing we'll want to add in is add in the support lines. Now, easiest way I found to do this is to just go up to place, down to multi, and then you've got this little slide along right here. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in a skew angle, negative 20 degrees, because that's what matches these bridge plans that I'm referencing right here. It's just a 20 degree skew right there. So 20 degree skew, length. Now when you enter in length here, that's the length of this dotted line. And you want to make sure that this length is greater than your bridge width because as I showed earlier um, similar to how if you have anything go beyond the alignment of the bridge it just doesn't model it if you have anything go beyond this distance out in the uh, I want to say transverse direction then it also will model it so it's better to err on the side of caution and make it too big than to make it too small because this, this line right here, it's not technically part of the bridge, it's just the, the where the support line lands. Anyway, so I'm also going to set the start station to 20. It locks in right there. Um, there's a snap, and I could try snapping into place right there. Um, because you can see it kind of breaks into the segments. So it could have, I could snap right there, but I just want to make sure I don't miss it. So I just I type that in there. I want a total of three support lines because that just matches what I'm drawing. And I just have this direction mode set to skew. Support line's fine because that is what I'm drawing. And now for the main station, I have that selected. So I just, and oh yeah, as I was mentioning, there's 25 meters. I believe that'll be more than enough because this bridge with right there, that's only 12.6. So this 25 should be plenty. So, and then once that's in there, I just left click to apply it. And it comes in like that. And I would just click again to confirm that I want it in the skew. And then I just need to set the end location. So I can either drag it to a point or I can manually define where I want that. 
Um, it can be hard to locate its exact location, so I think it will be easier just manually enter in the end. So, as we mentioned earlier, it, this bridge was 63.064 meters, so that means with the I to 20, I just need to take that out to 83.064. And that will lock it into place right where I want it. I'll just click again to build it, to apply it. And then it brings up this box. And here in this box, you can make any edits. So like, for example, if you have three support lines and say that the end two are skewed, but the one in the middle is straight across. Um, I don't think you'll ever come across that in most situations when you're actually building a bridge. But if you did, you could create like a typical alignment at all the support locations, then come in here and edit them as need be. And some, what's more common you'll likely run into is if the supports aren't all evenly spaced. Like some, most of them are typical spacing, but a few are smaller or larger, just to cross over what's already existing under the bridge. In that case, you can come into a station and just edit it there. But everything's fine there as far as I can tell, so I'll just click OK and that will drop those support lines in there. And I just push escape to stop drawing that and so now I have my support lines. Next thing I want to do is, oh, I want to add in the deck, but I'm gonna set my mark there so if I make any mistakes I can just back up to my mark and I don't have to worry about clicking the undo button the exact number of times I need to get back to where I was. So placing decks relatively simple, you just click place deck. And now you can, right at this point, you can set to a template. Um, you just click this dotted line here. Oh, it's opening up. Uh, loading, loading. There we are. So, oof. Okay. So, I'm going to be using is the slab with constraints. Now, you can create a new template uh, if there's something that you'll be using a lot, and I'll probably go over creating new templates in a different video. But for this, I'm just going to be using slab with constraints. And that basically, with constraints, just means that you're able to edit it. Um, you can just set turn constraints on and then you can go in and change the deck width and thickness and everything as you need it. But if there is a certain deck style you use a ton, it might make sense to create a template, but for this case I'm just gonna be mod I'm just gonna be modifying what already exists. So slab with constraints works for me. I have the make sure the add constraints is turned on if you plan on making any changes to the deck from what's already in the template. Deck concrete is just the default material for the deck, and you can change this or define something different if you want. Um, but this works for me. Reach definition deck. All right, all is good. It's always good just to make sure everything is entered in here correctly. You can you can always go into the properties and change things later, but it's just easier to have things done right in the first, at the start. So I just click the first boundary and click the end boundary. Add constraints, it just confirms it one more time. I say yes, I click again, and then it goes in to add my deck. And right here, since I had add constraints turned on, it opens up this window. And this is where I can change the defaults to something different. So, this is where I really need to start referencing my branch plans a bit more. So, looking at the bridge plans. You see that it has a 2% slope, and it's already in there. The default is 2%, so I don't need to make any changes to that. Now, the width is a little bit different. So, it is, this is done in uh, millimeters, so it's 12,600 out to out, which, if you divide that in half, is 6,300. So this is, this would be 6,100 if you're to do in millimeters. So I just need to change that. So I select active there, like that. And it just wants to know where you're, it's 
relative to and the default, just start at the support line at zero meters from it. This works just fine. Click the plus button to add in a change. The reason why they have this is so if you if your deck say uh, varies along its length as you go across the bridge, you can make changes as you go. Um, but that's not nothing that complex is happening here. So relative location, start distance, end distance. What we really need are interested in here is the start value and end value. We just need to make sure to change both the start and end value to the value you want, which would be 6.3 meters. And that changes that. I almost clicked OK, but I still need to make more changes, so I don't want to click OK just yet. All right, because I want to make that change to the right side as well. So I'll add that in. Change that to three. Change that to three. All right, and ah, next thing I need to check is the thickness. So thickness here, you see it's 205. So I need to change this here from the default. Just change that to 205. All right, and that all looks good. All right, and you can lock in point constraints too, like if you just want to lock one of these points in a specific location. I'm not messing with that in this tutorial. All right, so once everything looks good there, you just click OK, and it draws that in. So I like having an isometric view just because this lets you see clear. Oh, I want to click Escape to stop drawing decks. So I don't want to draw the one. All right. So yeah, there's the deck right there. And as you can see, since I entered this in, it's 20 meters above the ground. It's This is like the shadow that's casting on the ground. This is what this drawing down here below is. Um, if you're wondering what that was. All right, so now the deck is in.